This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And it's Easter, I heard the church bells ringing, so I thought this would be a good time to pray for my plants. Because they've proven that um, if you pray for your plants, they will grow better. If you pray for your plants, everything else is connected. So like they create your environment. I think that's why people have such a connection with plants. It's just, we need them for our food. And I watched a video by Fruitful Trees, Paul and, uh, Walter Zill at the old original Zill homestead. It was, I think it was the homestead. Anyway, it was a original grove that his dad planted. I wish they had YouTube back in um, when his dad planted those trees. He said he was like 13. He's an old man. He's older than me. So uh, uh, that's, it was a long time ago. I don't think he gave it time. And then he grafted he actually grafted uh, kit mangoes onto the trees his dad planted. In 71, he said. Anyway, it's a good video. I'd watch it if you're into fruit trees. I like the interview. Um, oh, these are looking good. This is going to be very uh, variegated, I can tell. This is the domesticum. And we got a new leaf on this. Burley Marks variegated. And this is going to be a very variegated leaf on this uh, Jose Buono. I'm glad this was like a half moon, basically. So this one looks more white. This one's like mint almost I love them I'm obsessed with them I pray for them pray for your plants <clears throat> I saw this article on the top trend for designing gardens is wild a wild garden um, well I got that covered <laughs> Pray for your plants. Oh. Thank God. So much wrong in the world. At least we still have plants. Um, Grow them organically if you can. Just, it does matter. Everything matters. Everything's connected when you're dealing with plants, right, plants? Uh, I noticed I did cuttings of all these plowmanii and uh, meme and soteroi and these. Uh, to, uh, you know, the ones that crawl across the ground. Well, Meme is that climber, but um, this is the Meme. It's, that's a new, a new branch it set off since I did a, a cutting from it. Just they thrive in this compost. It's truly amazing. Truly amazing. Maybe we want to go look at our mangoes. It was a really weird mango year. Hey, Shelly. I can't believe we had mangoes almost ripe. And then... Um, mangoes that are just, there's still flowers on the trees.
at all that fruit on this uh, honey kiss. Honey kiss is such a productive tree. I love it. So I loved uh, uh, oh, Walter Zill's uh, comments. Uh, said if you can plant a plant a seed. If you have time, plant a seed tree because you might get a good varieties. And plant the trees that produce a lot of fruit. Well, that's what I want to do. I want to just grow the fruit from the the good fruit from the trees that produce the most fruit consistently. So this is a, a, a sweet tart mango that uh, had all that powdery mildew, but it's got a lot of fruit on it. There's uh, some there that are getting big. And then you can't really see them from here. Here's the fruit punch that um, is getting closer. This is a bad area because the raccoons and the birds like to attack the trees in this area for some reason. But there's, uh, there's fruit on there. That cute little bunny. Easter bunnies. Where are you? Hello, little bunny. There it is. These are those little marsh rabbits. They're so cute. Yeah, I know. You guys like eat my little seedlings, but that's why I plant seed grown trees, because I'm sure some of the seeds are hard to find, but um, I like the rabbits. This uh, lychee, I've, I'm sure, is just starting to bloom. Seems like it's waiting for the, the rainy season to start. So we grow everything, you know, organic and don't water it. Stuff, just stuff grows just fine. Yeah, it's blooming, I can see it. Or it's starting to. Yep, right there. And then some of our trees are just got fruit on them and then some don't have any fruit and some aren't even blooming. This one looks like it's trying to bloom too. Normally this time of year, this uh, swamp is like uh, really like, I love the green. Green's my favorite color. So I just love looking at this, but just the greens, the, the, all the plants, pray for the plants. Usually that pond is like so full and um, are not so full this time of year. <laughs> it's uh, normally it's uh, almost dry. Previous five years, this is the first year it's actually had that much water in it. So that's a peach cobbler mango. It's got two crops on it. And that this tree is just two years in the ground. Um, two years and uh, four months. And it's about 12 feet tall and um, never been watered. I consider that productive for a peach cobbler mango because they're not all of them fruit very well it's location to location uh, this is a I see a sickly looking uh, 
Pineapple Pleasure on there. This is a, a Sugar Loaf Mango. And this is a mango, a coconut cream mango that's always produced tons of fruit, but I can see, you see all that freeze damage on the top? It got hit by the freeze pretty hard for some reason, especially for such a large tree. Um, all those burnt leaves, that's, it was in full bloom and it just hasn't even sent out any new uh, blooms, I don't think. Same with this sweet tart tree. This tree has always produced tons and tons and tons of fruit since we first planted it. Like the trees start producing the first year generally. And this was one of those trees. And um, it's, uh, I guess it's five years in the ground now. Last year it gave us so many fruit, it was ridiculous. Um, Pray for that tree. I pray for this tree. Pray for our trees. Pray for your trees. Pray for everyone's trees. It works. Look at the um, Tamarillo fruit. This tree is loaded with fruit. And I am so, I mean, I am so excited about this. Uh, fruit because I love to make salsa. I make salsa every week and um, it's supposed to be really good salsa made from these uh, tree tomatoes. Look at all these blooms. I mean uh, it looks like it's I'm glad I tied it up because it's um, it's like ridiculous um, the amount of blooms and fruit that is going to be on this little tiny tree. That's what I like. It's getting in the way of my trail though. There's a little sugar loaf mango back there that doesn't have any fruit on it. Two years in the ground. The little trees are two years in the ground. These bigger ones are five years in the ground. It's a weird mango year. Um, this is starting to look pretty here. I see these uh, heliconias that I just planted. These, that dead stuff. These are all heliconias. Once they get bigger, um, it'll look good. I like it's in the like Ukrainian colors, the yellow and the, the blue. Poor Ukraine. I don't understand why people have to like <laughs> go after certain people. Pray for the plants and people in Ukraine. Ugh. Wonder how many plant collectors were in those uh, buildings that they um, decide to destroy. I don't get that. I guess there's a lot of things to pray about. Uh, we're just praying for the plants. Pray for your plants. Florida is so beautiful. It's gotten so expensive. Our neighbor's house sold. Her, you know, it went pending. Um, thank God. Hopefully it's an organic person that bought it. Oh, you think that an organic person would... Um, people would want to grow organic here in Florida. Um, I thought that's where everyone was headed, but... That wasn't the case with that guy that I inspired to clear cut a whole native forest and burn all his trees. Pray for those plants. Uh, 
I love this palm tree with all those little uh, ferns growing out of it. This is this palm. We had it's been weird wind. It's been weird weather here. That's why the mango trees. I think a lot of them because I forgot about the multiple times of five inches of rain in like an hour and. So during one of those events, this palm tree, this old palm tree, I mean, look at how big these things are, snapped and was laying across my little walkway here. So I had to get my organic olive oil run electric chainsaw out and <laughs> cut the log. Boy, the birds are... I notice these places when videos I watch, that there seems to be birds in where there's big trees. That's a huge tree, that elephant ear tree. I can smell it from here. See how far it goes from there. house he tried to clear uh he cleared all the prop all the trees so that he could look right in our yard you could see his house right there his shed he built because it was all forested you couldn't see anything but and then he said i don't i don't want to grow a jungle like you and it's like well why did you <laughs> clear the property so you could look right in here of course the wild gardens what's the latest trend i guess uh, people realize, people are waking up. I think all the sickness and everything that everyone is getting. Um, and how crazy everyone's acting. Uh, this kind of waking people up to. What they've done with their pollutions to our food systems, because... <clears throat> That's, I don't know, it's, it's all connected. We just can't keep killing biology and expect any other outcome but death because that's what happens when you kill biology. for this tree, so beautiful. I can hear the bees in it. I gotta look at that. That's what I wanna do, I wanna look at that. Uh, this one aeroid along the walkway up here, the um, philodendron Sharonier, AFF, I believe. Uh, I think I forgot to put AFF on the tag. Which I need to do that, but I can remember because I. No, I put it on there. Yeah. Sharonier, AFF, sent off this new leaf from this cutting I planted here. See, it has a zebu turd right next to it. I found that putting a turd with a little seedling or a, or a plant like this generally guarantees that plant's gonna live. Look at the new leaf coming out already. Um, what a fast grower. No water. That's what, you know, you don't have to water any of this stuff in Florida. That's, you do if you use fertilizers. You know, water soluble fertilizers. But you don't need to use the fertilizers. That's that's the whole thing. <clears throat> the wild builds the biota that grows trees. So it's uh it's amazing system. I'm gonna go look at this little uh, 
orange sherbet mango because it's just amazed me last time I looked at it and it was just covered in in um fruit it's very warm again well it's it was like 65 last night which is nice uh, this tree is completely covered in bloom too so pretty I don't think that any plants are junk I think there's a place for all plants. Um, some people just get focused on whatever they, they're they doing, and uh, me included. That's why I was so uh, such a snob to mulberries, but I've found out I like them, and I'm glad that... Um, I evolved. It's over in the sunny side of the yard. I forgot to mention this Ingus spectabilis yesterday. Pray for this tree. Pray for all the trees. Pray. This is our biggest and oldest seed grown Ingus spectabilis trees from seed from Fruit Lovers Nursery. Uh, I think I bought like 10 seeds and this is the only one that survived because I wasn't really sure how to grow back then. Um, this is like five year old tree and the soil wasn't very good. I was still mowing when I planted this because I used to mow everything and then have rings around the trees of wood chips and mulch, hay and stuff. And um, it struggled. It didn't grow until I stopped mowing. <laughs> So this is an orange sherbet mango, and it's only two years in the ground. And look at all the freaking fruit on this thing. And it did it last year like this. Totally healthy, blemish-free fruit. Tons of it. I think I had to pull 20 mangoes off this last year, and it was only its first year in the ground. Um, and it still produced 20 mangoes. I don't know what forces some trees to grow fruit like that, but this is one tree that I want to plant all the seeds from, for sure. I'll buy the fruit myself. <clears throat> yeah, I have to buy my own fruit. Mango fruit. This is a fruit punch mango. It's, um, Got a lot of mangoes on it. It's a little tiny tree. It's a two-year-old tree. But this tree was kind of stunted for a while and then finally started growing this year. Took a year. This is a... Guanabana that is in Miami from Lara Farms that I planted about six years ago. A little less, five and a half years ago probably. And... Um, it's dry farmed and it lost its leaves when it got down to 49 degrees here this year. Uh, some of these branches looks like they defoliated, so they did die, it looks like. Some of the branches, probably from the 31, two days of freezing weather. Um, but the tree looks like it's finally getting big enough where it can withstand the cold better. This is a peach cobbler mango that did have quite a bit of fruit on it, but 
a lot of it has fallen off, but I see one fruit there and there's probably some other that I'm not seeing, but I produce, this is just a, you know, two year in the ground uh, mango uh, that produced a, lot, produced a lot of fruit last year. Giving them manure, the zebu manure, it makes everything fruit, especially the, ma the mangoes. <clears throat> I, I, I truly believe that. The clean zebu manure. Anyway, this is uh, Florida Natural Farming at Cog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Pray for your trees. Pray for everyone. Have a good day.